And essentially, you'd have every G7 country with uh, a net zero pledge by 2050. Uh, and that's significant, right? And, and, you know, along with some of the commitments China's making. So I think there's an argument to me that, that we are starting to see uh, some momentum building uh, into the right direction. Then the question is, okay, well, you've agreed to those targets. How do you actually achieve them? So I think the toolbox is basically this. I mean, you have carbon pricing is a, a really important uh, tool. Uh, various regulations or rules that we, we put in the marketplace. There are subsidies, and there's almost the opposite of the carbon tax, another way of trying to create incentives. Uh, and then there are various public investments that, that need to be made. Uh, I think that, you know, in the discourse as climate policies evolve in Canada, almost too much weight has been put on carbon pricing, largely because of economists, you know, like myself, because there's this intuitive idea that if we just get the prices right, if we call it internalize the externalities or all these costs that get imposed on third parties now and into the future from our carbon emissions, if you could just, you know, have a carbon tax that reflected those costs, then the marketplace would do its magic and, and we would get an, uh, an allocation of resources that puts us on, you know, this sort of like net zero path. I think, you know, we have to be more cautious on that, um, largely because the of the politics um, that to get a high enough carbon price to drive the deep emission reductions we need is very politically difficult. So, you know, here in Canada, we've just gone through this exercise of the past few years where you know, in 2022, we will have a national floor carbon price that's basically equivalent to like 11 cents per liter of, uh, on, a, on a, you know, filling up your tank of gas uh, at the pump. So it's not a really huge uh, change in terms of, of how it's shifting uh, incentives. So, so we, we've had some modest carbon pricing, but to get to uh, levels that economists say, you know, if you were to continue those annual increases, um, then we might eventually get to that place. But I think politicians are wary of going beyond, you know, the $50 per ton uh, maximum uh, now. Now we're expecting a new federal climate plan in the weeks to come. So there may be a new pathway that builds on that, on that carbon pricing experience. So to me, I think carbon taxes are, are good in the sense that they do create some incentive to change uh, behavior, but more importantly, they raise revenue. And that revenue can be used to fund the things that we want to, to put into sort of various um, activities that reinforce uh, climate action. So I think that's kind of the, the more nuanced view I take on, on carbon pricing. I think we also need, in addition to incentives, we need some very clear rules and, and, and bans on certain activities. So rather than trying to like do this all through pricing, I think we need to say, you, you know, after 2030, you can't buy a vehicle with an internal combustion engine. Uh, after 2030, you can't buy a brand new house uh, that has uh, natural gas uh, as its main uh, heating and, and, and water, you know, water heating source. Uh, and a, a phase out of uh, the use of gas and other fossil fuels in existing buildings, uh, moratorium on new fracking sites or oil sands mines and, and sort of stopping investments in new fossil fuel infrastructure that, you know, is inconsistent with where we need to go. Um, the other piece is we need a big public investments. Uh, let's build out rapid transit in cities across Canada and connect those cities with a high speed rail. That's maybe a little trickier, the high speed rail part in BC, but certainly in Southern Ontario and Quebec, uh, it's something that people have talked about, you know, for decades. So let's just do it. Let's, let's, let's build it. Uh, and let's build a generation of, of public led uh, affordable housing, um, you know, mid rise wood frame passive house, you know, built to the highest standards with very low embodied uh, carbon emissions in, in the construction. So I think there's a lot of things we can do that are, are simultaneously our work program and employment program, but also industrial strategy and climate policy at the same time.